I am joined by a phenomenal woman herself. She is a journalist. Uh, she describes herself as a career journalist, yeah? And she also hosts an online engagement on her platform, Bira Online. And she is doing amazing, amazing things. And we have seen her on our TV screens. Uh, we need to find out where she disappeared to, but without further ado, uh, my drum rolls, they're not here. <laughs> Kari Busana, Joy, Doreen, Mira. Okay, so yeah, thanks for having me here. Yeah. I am excited to respond to your questions. <laughs> yeah, it feels... Like, they're like a million and one of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. It feels weird sitting on this other side, yeah? It's very weird, but I am starting to get used to it because lately it's happening a lot more often than I expected, yeah. so... Yeah, I am getting used to it now. Resisting the urge to ask the questions. Very much. So I try to have a conversation <laughs> with the person asking the questions before they start asking them so I can ask all the questions, <laughs> run out of them so they are able to ask me their side of the questions. Yeah. Ah, amazing, amazing. Yeah. So lovely to have this conversation with you. And before we actually start this convo, maybe uh, just a brief, a brief, brief um, background of how you have gotten to where you are today? Well, um, besides the fact that God <laughs> comes first. <laughs> yes, yes. Definitely. Because without God, there's so little that we can do. Yeah. But taking you back to my journey, mm -hmm. my journey is weird. Um, no, is it weird? Is, is weird the word? It's like a, something of a coincidence. Mm -hmm. So I was about 19... Am I allowed to say 19 and a half years old? <laughs> I was about 19 going on 20 years old. Yeah. Um, just started my second year in university, a student of information technology, who just happened to have a friend who was going for auditions yeah. at a new TV station. And he's like, Joy, let's go. Let's just go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, forget it. TV is not my thing. Yeah. But I can accompany you to the auditions. You do your thing because you're the one who wants to be a sports presenter. And I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting for you in the hallway. Yeah. So we went. He went, did his auditions. And as I was waiting for him, somebody just came and said, so how about you go up there and say your names? I'm like, really? <laughs> Saying my names is easy. <laughs> what am I going to say after that? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, well, just be yourself. Be yourself. Just say whatever. Mm -hmm. Respond to all the questions you ask. I insisted, by the way, I said I'm not going there because I'd seen so many ladies coming down, you know, with all the makeup, they've done auditions, they're looking good. I'm and like, they were ready. They, they were ready. ready. They had prepared. I was wearing a t-shirt, a pair of jeans and boots, just like a typical campus student. And there was being convinced to go to the audition room. I went in there and I was asked so many questions. But either it's either how I responded to the questions or mm -hmm. it was about something, something that God had purposed to happen that happened that day. And I was asked to pick a form from somewhere that I think only five, six people had picked up that day mm -hmm. and filled out my details. And then I received a phone call later. But then I didn't know that from the auditions that had been done maybe that day, yeah. I was possibly the only person who had filled out that form oh, wow. and was asked the next day to take a CV that I didn't have. <laughs> Maybe you're 19. <laughs> I, I mean, I was, well, ish around there. And just having to do that, I had to literally go and ask my fellow cosmates who were like way older than me. And I'm like, how do you write a CV? How do you ABC craft put it together and all yeah, of that? Yeah. And they helped me in addition to me going and Googling how to write a CV. Mm -hmm. um, then I took the CV and long story short, that was the beginning of my TV journey because I was trained for two weeks and then I was told, Monday, you're going on air. You're doing a morning show and this is what it's going to look like. So first time in a suit, first time doing heavy makeup, like, I don't know, five, five layers. layers of makeup. <laughs> First time, so many first things yeah. that were happening to me. So the tension, the nerves, they were so up there. Then you get to studio, camera, ah. lights, what, everything. Thank God I had a co-host who had like six years experience in the media. Yeah. So I was literally looking up to him. Like I would wait for him to finish a sentence before I say the next thing. Yeah. Um, and made sure I kept it brief because I wasn't sure what I was, if what I was saying was going to be 
Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's how my TV journey started. But, I mean, there were so many lows <laughs> in my first weeks. So many lows because my journey started in Uganda. Mm -hmm. um, that's where my journey in media began. Yeah. So, was it if, a political if you know how show? Rough, yeah. No, it was a breakfast show. So okay. literally, you review the newspapers, ah, okay. you read the news, and then you t you have business conversations. Mm -hmm. I think I was stronger with the business conversations than I was with the political side of things. Yeah. Uh, but then along the way, I started to literally learn everything. Because I think maybe after two weeks, my co-host is like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't. It's so hard working with her. It's just, there's She's so much she needs to know. There were so many times I was like, you know what? This is it. I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm done. Yeah. Let me just go back to my information technology <laughs> classes and forget about this media thing. Yeah. But they kept pushing me. Um, I remember my boss one time calling me to his office and saying, don't you ever do a show like what you did today. I was like, oh my gosh. I think this is it. I'm done. <laughs> this is the day I quit I'm done. Oh, no. I'm fired. And by the way, I stood mm -hmm. up yeah. and said, okay, can I now continue with my information technology classes? Very bluntly, I said that to him. And he said, sit down. So because he knew, I, I, I think I was getting out of that campus crap that, yeah. you know, he, <laughs> he thought that I was going through. Mm -hmm. And he's like, listen, I know you're young. I know, I know it all. I know you're a university student. You feel like you're missing out on the fun and the everything and everything. Yeah, but pressure. Hey, hey, yeah, straighten up. <laughs> so that was pretty much me. And he sat me down and said, listen, there's mm -hmm. something that you have that you don't know that you have. Yeah. And I'm trying to get it out of you. So you need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. I think that your future is brighter than what you're seeing right now. So it's up to you, really. You have a blank check. I've given you the platform. Yeah. It's now up to you to know where you're going to take it. If you, after this conversation with me, come back to me and say you want to go on with this thing, yeah. let me know. And we can take it from there. So I went back. I sat and I'm like, ah, this is too much pressure. You know, I could, might, might as well just quit. So after several hours, I call him and I'm like, okay, okay. Let me try it. Let me try it again. <laughs> I'll be better. Yeah. I'll do better. So he's like, fine. So he gave me all the morning show uh, tapes of BBC's morning show, ITV's morning show, mm -hmm. uh, ABC TV's morning show in the United States. All the morning shows you can ever think of. Yeah. They were, back then, they were on bitter comes. So <laughs> <laughs> I literally had to watch every, every single morning. one of them every day after the show and that was the beginning i should say of my tv journey i was trained on the job um learned on the job every time i would hear of journalist training i'll take it up every time i would hear about anything to do with perfecting your art as a communicator or presenter i would take it yeah whether it was a week or two weeks or three weeks i'd take You'd it take it i i took them all and then, of course, if you know about Uganda's media, you know that there's a tabloid called The Red Pepper. Yeah, yeah. And it's very <laughs> rough. So my first months in the media were crazy because mm -hmm. the media wrote about me and said how... I don't want to use the word blonde. <laughs> well, I cover better well, time. I cover better <laughs> word. But um, they actually put it out. And I remember calling the, the person who wrote the article, mm -hmm. and I said, listen, I'm going to be very blunt with you. I was never a communications person. Yeah. Everything I'm doing, I'm learning it on the job. Mm -hmm. But thank God, I was 20 or 19-ish, 20 years old, yeah. and I could do anything with myself. You know, I could take all the risks and exactly. still walk with my head up high because who cares? You have a whole life old, ahead of you. You know, exactly. Yeah. So I, I talked to him and I said, look, if there's something you want to teach me, teach, teach me. me. Don't go and start bashing me in your newspapers because the truth is I am learning on the job. So take it in stride. Fine, write your article. It will get published and everybody will say whatever, whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, know that you have a role to play. If you want me to be better, you better tell me what I need to do better. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started to build my confidence in the media and, and grow as 
as, as a media personality, it actually started from those basics that you can come from nothing and become something. And here you are. And here I am. <laughs> you know, how many years later? It's been over 10 years now. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and why? Why business? Why business? Why business? That's an interesting question. Yeah. So let me, let me take you back to, to when I just started out. Um, when I was in Uganda, I worked in Uganda for about, I think, four or five years before I moved to Kenya. And while I was there, I, <clears throat> there's so much that I was doing. I was interacting with, with different people because I had now grown my profile from just a morning show pre uh, presenter to a news anchor, a primetime news anchor. I was also a radio presenter while there. I was a moderator of events. I was an MC. I was a voiceover artist. I was literally a jack of all trades <laughs> and a master of them all. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, after these four years, yeah. I mean, I had met so many executives. They had taught me about things that I felt, you know, um, were things I needed to know because... Mm -hmm. You know, when you come from a space of not knowing anything, yeah. you tend to want to know everything. everything. So I, tend, I tended to have that urge to want to learn about what happens in the executive uh, business spaces. Yeah. So I, I literally knew about the process of how, from the members of parliament on the political side to the business side of how decisions are made. Yeah. And maybe that tended to, in a way, craft out my interest in business. So even when I moved to Kenya, mm -hmm. I was offered a job at KTN as a primetime anchor. And I was a primetime anchor, actually, on the main news for about maybe 10 months. And then there was a change in management yeah. at the time yeah. where they brought in other anchors. And so when you're in that space where you're trying to figure out what is your next strongest point, mm -hmm. um, because you know there's, there's a change that has happened, yeah. so you need to bring out your other niche. So for me, my other for niche leverage, I felt yeah. was, I think I can do technology stories because I was an information technology student. Yeah. Um, and that's my background. So did you finish school, by the way? I did. You did. Yes. As you were still at yes. the Ugandan station. I took a year out and then went back and, okay. and, <laughs> and finished. All right. Yeah. So that's the background I used to say, look, I think I know a bit about business. I know about what happens in the business world. Yeah. And so when all of these changes happened at KTN, I took, I branched off to the business side. Mm -hmm. So I became the business anchor and then I started from scratch because the Ugandan space is different from the Kenyan space. Very true. Kenyan yeah. space is very aggressive. Yeah. So you also have to be brought up to speed or you need to bring yourself up to speed with, with how the media in Kenya operates. Yeah. So I started doing that, um, learning literally from scratch um, because there was so much to learn as well. But I said, you know what? I've done it once. I can do it you again. You can do it again. I can do it again. I can always do it again. <laughs> I mean, you so, started from nothing. <laughs> I started from the bottom. So, yeah, I mean, I started to learn again. I would ask my editor so many questions. Um, so how do you go about this? How do you go about that? Because, you know, it's a different market. And I, I think a lot of things, who? one of the things I think young people fear to do is ask questions. Mm -hmm. But they forget that you have an advantage of being young. So everybody is willing to answer all the questions that you have. Yeah. Whether yeah. they are stupid questions or they are irrelevant questions True. or whatever questions, somebody is always willing to answer that question. So mm -hmm. the best you can do is ask so you can know now than getting to know later when people are like, really? Or when you failed. You're this old, you yeah. don't know what this means. <laughs> Or yeah, even after so, you failed, that's when you're like, why didn't I ask this question? Exactly. Yeah. So I I started there and that's how I built my business profile. In fact, people don't even remember that I was ever a primetime anchor in Kenya. Yeah. Everybody thinks business. business. When they look at me, they're like, oh, the business anchor. I'm yeah. Like, that's a good thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you carved your niche and, yes. and that's where um, you grew and thrived. Exactly. To where you are yeah. right now. Yeah. Then you made this bold decision to leave mainstream media ah. and branch out. <laughs> Did you know what you were going to do after you left mainstream media? 
you know, they always say you need to have a plan B. Yeah. Every time you're thinking of leaving a job, there mm -hmm. needs to be a plan B. You either have another job already yeah. or you're somewhere. You know what you're looking for. Yeah, you know what you're, what gonna, you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. So um, let's start by saying the reason why I left was I needed a break. I felt that I had gotten to a point where I needed to take a break for a bit because my family was growing. At the time, um, I had one boy and then I was, I just got pregnant with the second one. Okay. So I'm like, I think I need to slow down a bit because I would like to have my, spend some more time with my kids. Yeah, watch yeah. them grow. But then mm -hmm. it would also give me an opportunity to explore my other strengths. Mm -hmm. So I literally just said, you know, let me take a break. I'll come back uh, when... I feel like the kids are a bit grown. And yeah, I, I took a break. I took a break. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Yeah, I took a break, but it was planned. It was planned. Okay. I had been thinking about it, but I think there's so much that happened in between there that, mm -hmm. that kind of made things happen faster. Yeah. So by the time I was taking the break, I was feeling a little bit exhausted. Mm -hmm. And fatigued as well. So I said, you know, for me to be able to come back fresher, re-energized, yeah. let me take a break. So I planned it and uh, I had done some training with a UNDP project. Yeah. So I took up a six-month uh, contract that was extended into a year. Yeah. And uh, from there, I said, you know, I'll see whatever can come next. I'll, I'll just do it. Yeah. So it was... An interesting project because it helped me understand what my strengths are in strategic communication. I did that. And then when it was done, I said, so what next? You know, I think I'm going back to mainstream, <laughs> mainstream media. media. But then I had a conversation with uh, some people from Deutsche Welle yeah. or DW. Yeah. And they're like, so we're thinking of having some business contributors mm -hmm. how about you step in for us from from nairobi and i'm like okay sounds like a good idea so we oh, discussed wow. the terms mm -hmm. and all of that i mean so yeah i've been doing dw contribution as well as strategic communication consultancy since and <clears throat> i'm sure your next question you're going to ask is are you thinking of going back yeah my <laughs> doors are open <laughs> My doors are open to yeah. going back to uh, local mainstream media mm -hmm. from next year, not not, not now, not now, not, not now. now. And even next year, I, it, it will depend, really. All right. I'm not saying no. I'm not closing any doors, but um, yeah, you're you're open. Mm -hmm. you're, let's just say you're open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to have that conversation. Yeah. All right. Let's move to your move into the online, um, the digital platforms. We have seen you. Having um, bringing on guests on your Bira online platform, yeah, and it's something that has really caught on so fast. Tell us a bit about how you began that platform, how you began Bira online, and why? Why did you think of um, Instagram Live? Right, um, that's a good question. So when I was starting out in my industry, there's so much that I didn't know. And I think that people who are 19 years old today know either so much or they know nothing. And so the reason why I started Bira Online was pretty much to impact people's lives. So if you want to be a journalist and you don't know anything about being a journalist, yeah. why don't we have a, a more experienced journalist to come and tell you the ABCs of what you need to know about being a journalist yeah. what are the skills you need to have yeah. um, how do you become a great journalist mm -hmm. in your career mm -hmm. in the career that you want to pursue if you want to be a pilot how about we bring you a pilot who flies the airbus to come talk about being a pilot how yeah. do you start out what do you need what is required so that was the thinking behind bira online as a platform mm -hmm. and um these are conversations that we started during lockdown because we realized uh, that during lockdown, there were so many people who used to DM me and be like, so I, I, need, I need to know about this. I need to know how do I become this? How do I start a business? How do I? And while I had the answers to yeah. most of those questions, I didn't have the time to respond to all of those questions. So I said, 
what if on a weekly basis we just do this because it's locked down, people yeah. are home, mm -hmm. um, they can learn something from something from yeah. someone. Um, yeah, so we started the platform pretty much to educate, but importantly to impact the lives of people so they can know how they start from an informed point of view, not mm -hmm. starting how I started yeah. <laughs> on a nothing yeah. Uh, platform. Yeah. And how has that um, impacted lives? The, the engagements you've had so far it's actually been great because i've used people that i look up to to speak to these audiences i've also used people who have mentored me i've also used business coaches i've used uh, people that i've met during events that i've moderated uh, to come and speak during this bureau online conversations and so it's really impacted people because for someone to say i went for an interview and i knew exactly what i was saying and i got the job that is is some impact you know you can you can write home about and while some of these conversations were monetized i realized that they were impacting more people than i expected and it's not just people in kenya mm -hmm. uh, people across the region across the african continent um and people even started saying so how can I be part of the conversations? Yeah. Um, but they're not, they've not just been conversations. They've also been um, helping in my work because sometimes when you're doing strategic communication, you also need to have value addition. Mm -hmm. So it's, it hasn't just been conversations. Yeah. We've also had to have value addition where if one of your clients wants to pass on a message, you give yeah. them the platform to mm -hmm. pass on the message. So if people want to know about renewable energy, you provide the platform yeah. to, for people to know about renewable energy, but at the end of the day, it's backing up something else that you're doing. True. Um, so yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so this month, we have actually been looking at how um, to run a business in Kenya. Right. And I feel <coughs> like um, the way you even started that online platform, Yes, in as much as you are trying to impact, you know, the youth and people who are looking up to you to find out this or that. Yeah. It's also in some way a business. In some way. And mm -hmm. there are people who are actually doing that um, in terms of their day to day. That's what's bringing their bread and butter. Are there other opportunities, online opportunities that are available for us to, you know, venture out into that haven't been tapped? into in your opinion that has women that <laughs> okay um i don't really like to specify that as women because i tend to i'm a believer in equal opportunities so i think that what a woman can do a man can do yeah. what a girl can do a boy can do too but if we're going to look at giving opportunities to women yeah. i think that women need to be confident in their abilities because it's that lack of confidence that sometimes affects your income yeah mm -hmm. sometimes you know how to do something yeah but you don't trust that what you're going to do is going to be worth paying for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yet on the other side this guy comes and says i can do your videography whether or not he's good at it yeah he's telling you but you can pay me fifty dollars yeah. for for thirty minutes, and he's straight up. He has the confidence. He's not sure what kind of videography he's going to do, but he has the confidence. True. So there's that difference between girls and boys, women and uh, men, yeah. that we need to really build on because I think that there's so much potential for starting businesses. The only difference is that sometimes we as women tend to lay back because we're like uh maybe this thing is not meant for me mm -hmm. so trust your abilities and go forth and execute um but then also i want to say about the opportunities that are available for yeah. starting businesses online i think that everyone can do everything and these opportunities are there you just need to because everyone is doing everything now. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Everyone has moved if, online. If, if I could give an example of where we're doing the interview from right now. Yeah. Um, maybe on the next block, there could be a beauty and spa place. Mm -hmm. On the block after that, there's a beauty and spa place. But why does so-and-so choose to go to beauty and spa X 
and not why, mm -hmm. despite the fact that they offer the same services. Yeah. It's either because of your discipline, your consistency, your trust, your um, quality of work, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's those qualities that are built on that make businesses successful. So there's so much opportunity for people online. You just need to craft your niche and say, if this is what I'm good at, I'm good at um, digital marketing. Yeah. This is what I'm going to focus on. Mm -hmm. Do that. There's so many people doing digital marketing, but what sets your digital marketing apart yeah. from the rest of the people who are doing it? Yeah. There has to be those qualities. So you focus on those and then... Know what your value is because I think sometimes we don't know our value. When somebody says, I'll offer you $50, you're like, yeah, let's work with $50. You yeah, know, $50 yeah. is good enough. Mm -hmm. But you don't know that there's someone who is charging for probably just as much work that you're doing. Charging, I don't know, 200, 300, $500. 500, yeah. You know, so know your value, mm -hmm. know your worth. And try as much as you can to figure out from people out there who are in your same industry, yeah. what the current market rates are. If you don't know the current market rates, um, I'll give an example of a news anchor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? If you're a news anchor and you somebody offers you a job, mm -hmm. you don't know what the current market rates are. Yeah. And maybe where you've been working, you've been earning $500. So this next employer is offering you $550. Mm-hmm. The person who you're going to be anchoring with is probably earning $1,500. How are you going to know yeah, yeah, that they're earning $1,500 yeah. if you don't ask what the current market rates are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So call people, you know, what are the current market rates? Am I underselling myself if I, if I do this? Yeah. Um, what, how do I negotiate, you know? Ask people, ask questions. It goes back to asking questions. Asking, ask, 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 ask all the questions you need to ask. Be as you, annoying you as don't, you can. <laughs> If you don't ask, you might be earning $550 for the next three years while the person oh. you're doing work with is, is earning probably twice, thrice That's as much true. that you're earning. Um, so I also think that it's important for you to craft integrity. I think that above and beyond the opportunities that come our way, mm -hmm. there is something about integrity if i'm working with you today yeah and in the first 15 minutes of a conversation i figure that your integrity levels are low yeah i might work with you today but tomorrow i'll say um can i work with someone else true, you know true. so integrity is key mm -hmm. so even as there are so many opportunities that are open today um, digital marketing in the online space um, strategic communication in the online space whatever it is, you know, um, influencing, mm -hmm. whatever it is, have them, but have those other qualities. They're very important to you succeeding in the online business. Consistency, yeah. professionalism, integrity, very, very key. And um, that, those are what I'm picking out from everything that you've said. And yeah. um, well, I'm, ask, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question. Is it that... It's our bringing as women or as girls that we feel that I don't think I'm worth as much as the next guy in the room. Is it our bringing or why do we feel the need to, you know, see ourselves as less than the men? Well, it could be. It could play part. Um, that's interesting that you ask that. But, but I want to pose it to you and I want to give you a scenario. Mm -hmm. You have brothers, right? Yeah. When you're growing up, um, or when you were growing up, did you have to wash dishes while your brother washed TV? Well, he came way later. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. There was some um, general... So, exactly. So how I grew up, we grew up in an equal opportunity family, mm -hmm. equal tasks family, yeah. where we all did the dishes, but we all watched TV at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's differences in upbringing, but mm -hmm. how much of that upbringing affects you in future? Yeah. Because you see, even parents, when parents are having children, sometimes they wish that, you know, while I have two boys, I would love to have a girl somewhere. Yeah. I think I'm talking about myself. <laughs> um, I would like to have a girl somewhere. Yeah. Um, so if you can think that, why then do we tend to change the narrative mm -hmm. 
Mm. When we grow up and say, this is a role for women, but this is a role for men, Men. why do we say, this, you need to pursue this career in nursing, but I want my son to pursue a career as an engineer. Give them equal opportunities right from the start. Because if you as a parent can say, I want to have two boy children and two girl children, Mm -hmm. give them the same equal opportunities that you think of each time you're thinking about how differently. So upbringing plays a role, but I think that societal expectations also sometimes tend to put women's expectations down, which I think is something that needs to change. So if I'm going to say I choose to challenge, I'm going to choose to challenge the narrative of having to look at women as of lesser value, you know? Give equal value to everybody because... We probably even do twice as much the work yeah. that, that our male counterparts do. Exactly. So without having to sound biased, I want to choose <laughs> to challenge everybody out there to just make sure that they give equal opportunities to both men and women. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Um, and finally, before I let you go, and as my producer is trying to give me the YouTube comments, I don't have them here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Um, how do how has the media scene changed um, for women since you came in and where we are now? Do you feel that there has been a change in terms of um, equal opportunities and you know the quality of work that is being um, let out there? Yeah, 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 definitely. A lot has changed um, since I started. Um, when I started, I think I was the only female. On the morning crew, Mm -hmm. on the morning show that I was doing back in the days, you know. So, right now, Mm -hmm. if I look back at how that show is doing today, it has more females on the show. Oh, wow. The one you started with in Uganda? Yes, yes, the one I started with in Uganda. Yeah. And even when I moved here, there were fewer women in the newsroom. Forget about the ones who were on TV as news anchors, but in the background. um, We now have more women in media spaces. We Mm. have more women in decision-making spaces in the media as well, which I think is a plus. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think also more needs to be done. We need more women in business journalism. Yeah, (laughs) I think we're we're, we're still struggling on that front. Um, And we need, yeah, we need more women in business, (laughs) in business journalism. (laughs) And investigative journalism as well. Yeah. Financial journalism, financial investigative journalism. We need more women because if, if we don't get them in those spaces, it's going to feel like we who came before them, we're not motivating them mm-hmm. or mentoring them enough to pick an interest in, in these spaces. And honestly, business journalism is not that hard if I'm going to speak for the business journalists. Um, you just need to know what makes the news in business and Mm -hmm. how to craft out the stories and and pretty much that's it. So I think that a lot has changed. Um, There's more women who are doing tremendous stories in the media and there's so much space for women to explore their opportunities because um, I think now media houses are not as um, conservative as they used to be before. Um, right now, we have more female investigative journalists than we had before. We're not at the point to we can now say, okay, I think we now need more more, more men, men, or we are now <laughs> yeah. at at an equal space. Yeah. But yeah, there, there's so much that has been achieved, mm-hmm. while there needs to be more to be achieved. Yeah. And as I'm letting you um, go, one last thing: a lot of people, young people these days, think, ah, what on the end online? Um, there's a lot of uh, opportunities for me there to create yeah. money. And, and they think that I'll make money. You'll become a millionaire or you'll become a, an online sensation in a week. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to become the next influencer. Um, they don't know what it takes to get to where other influencers are, how to build the numbers. What would you say to people who have that notion in their minds? Everything is a process. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use examples of notable, famous online people. Who do you know online that, that is famous? Julie Gishuru. Julie Gishuru. Okay. Another one? Um, 
Who is not an influencer or who is an influencer? Either, either of them. Uh, Janet Mbugwa. Janet Mbugwa. Right. So you see all those uh, personalities you just mentioned. Yeah. They started somewhere. They didn't just build all of these big personalities online out of the blue. Even if you're going to use the top influencers today, yeah, if you're going to use mommy, Jugush, talk, Jugush, let's use talk, Jugush as yeah. an example. Says, Jugush yeah. started literally as, as just posting videos. But guess what? He was consistent. Mm-hmm. And there's no influencer today or there's no big personality online who you could actually point out and say this person is not consistent. Yeah. There's none. Everyone who is online is consistent. Everyone who is online uh, knows their niche. If you're looking for content about um, health, menstrual health, yeah. you know that Janet Mbugwa is the person you're going to be looking for. Sure. If you're looking for entertaining content, you're going to look at uh, Njugush's platforms. Yeah. If you're looking for content that holds conversations that are forward-thinking or whatever, you're going to look at Julie Gishu's uh, platforms. Mm-hmm. So it's a process. And I think that many young people today want instant gratification. True. But you can't get the instant gratification if you don't put in the work. Put in the work and let the work speak for you. Yeah. You can only do so much if, if you're not consistent. Yeah. Okay, you can only do so much if you're not consistent. So I think that's where we end this conversation. Um, thank you so much for Anytime. having me. Thank Anytime. you. <laughs> oh, I'm being told there's another question or a comment on YouTube. Okay. All right. How do you make money online? Um, just provide tips on how you make online money online. And this is the very last question. You just <laughs> say, give me the money. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> there are different ways of making money online. Yeah. Um, and I know that so many young people are like, I need money. I, I need know. money. Yeah. If I'm going to afford this weave, I, I need money. If I'm mm-hmm. going to do this, I need money. But here is how to start. Yeah. There are all the social media platforms Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Which other one? Which, TikTok. Which, TikTok. Yeah. Uh, MySpace, wherever, and all the other platforms. If you want to make money as a photographer, share your profile on there. Go to LinkedIn, put your CV in there. Go to Twitter, your bio. Make sure you use your names, not like someone should say photographer254. No one knows photographer254. So use your names and then in your bio, write out what you do. Mm -hmm. And if expose your work you know I should say put your work out there so people can see it okay. if people don't see they don't believe in today's digital world yeah um, people want to know how many numbers you have you know so if your content doesn't have the numbers sometimes they'll ask questions and I know I personally don't believe in numbers but I believe in the quality of someone's work yeah um, I think that money comes as you put your work out there mm-hmm if you feel strongly that your work is worth paying for, put it on your platforms and there's someone who is going to believe in that work of yours. Yeah. And I know that this question is coming in about how do you make money online in the context of, yes, I've put my content out there, but the money is not coming in. So yeah. how do I make the money? Mm-hmm. Um, so this is how. Sometimes you would like, you would you know pass on your CV. I work with LinkedIn a lot because I think LinkedIn has created so many opportunities for me yeah. that I think people tend to not realize it. Mm-hmm. That you don't make money from how many views you have or how many likes you have on your posts. Yeah. But you make money from how else you market yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, if you moderate an event today, who will know that you did moderate it if no one talks about it somewhere mm-hmm. or if people don't say oh by the way um i think that you really had a good conversation yeah or even just share pictures you know say we had a conversation about abc maybe you were talking about let me use an example of something you're passionate about mm-hmm. making money online yeah so the next time someone is thinking how do we get in touch with we're looking for someone who can talk about making money online yeah and someone will remember i saw a picture of you 
on LinkedIn mm-hmm. or Instagram or yeah. Twitter or Facebook talking about making money online. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they would want to get in touch with you because they want you to talk about it. So maybe the client who wants you to talk about this has nothing to do with that event that you covered or that you, you know, talked about. But they want you to come into a different space altogether to talk about this. Yeah. So my advice is put your work out there, but use it as a stepping stone to make money. Mm-hmm. There are people who easily make money on YouTube just by the views they will make money. Yeah. Because uh, Google or YouTube will advertise on their content and they'll make money. Yeah, yeah. But not everyone is gifted like that, you know. Not everyone makes money from YouTube mm-hmm. or is paid by YouTube. Yeah. Some people post content on there because it's serving another purpose. It's showing the people out there that you can do X, Y, Z. So don't don't tend to fixate your money making ventures in how many views do I have how many likes do I have think about the bigger picture who else is going to see my content when you post a picture on there make sure it's of good quality so the person who comes to you next can say I like that picture or I like that video or I like that footage sometimes it goes above and beyond what you think people will be expecting to call you for um so i think that you just need to be strategic in making money online some people will pay you to write an article uh, about a certain topic and it's up to you to determine how much you're worth so if you're worth 5000 shillings well and good quote 5000 shillings if you're worth 100000 shillings don't be shy just quote 100,000 shillings mm. and give reason as to why you deserve 100,000 shillings and let them decide if they're going to negotiate you downwards how much low can you go are you going to say okay because i asked for 100,000 now i'm going to take 40,000 yeah no. no know your value know mm-hmm. how much you're worth and the kind of content that you want to put out there mm-hmm. sky's your limit and uh, yeah, I don't want to water down that conversation, <laughs> oh, no, that <laughs> statement. <laughs> this is where we wrap up this conversation. I know we can speak for hours on end. Uh, we can, yeah. <laughs> we, we can, can for sure. Yeah, we can have this conversation for hours on end. But thank you so much for coming Thanks to for the having show. Me. Thanks for having me. Um, it, was, it was beautiful. And yeah, we were celebrating women. And so we celebrate you and um, what you're doing in your space. And yeah, keep growing, keep winning. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And may you achieve everything you've set out to achieve. Amen to that.